there are many, many different types of commons. In fact, commons are best understood in their particularity rather than in the abstract. In Switzerland, there's a canton that has a sophisticated irrigation system in the Alps that catches water directly from glaciers and brings it to villages and farms. It's run as a commons. There is an open source community called Open Source Ecology that is building agricultural equipment that's inexpensive, modular, locally sourced, and freely adaptable. Time banking is an international local time barter exchange movement that allows cash poor communities such as the elderly and the poor and the unemployed to meet their everyday needs by trading their talents with each other. The nu Nutrient Dense Project is a commons for technical knowledge and tools that enables farmer-to-farmer -farmer cooperation in science. It, con it consists of a small group of volunteers of farmers, gardeners, orchardists, ranchers, and researchers. These are just a few of the thousands upon thousands of commons that exist in the world. You see, the commons as a system for managing resources has been around since the beginning of human history. It's a very old paradigm that's being rediscovered. There are no master inventory of commons. They exist whenever a community decides that it wants to manage a shared resource for the benefit of its members with a special emphasis on fairness, sustainability, and long-term stewardship. That's why you can have commons in places where you would never imagine them possible. There's a group of surfers in Hawaii who act as a social commons managing access to the big waves, which is seen as a matter of safety and social etiquette. In the US, there's a commons of nonprofit theater people, playwrights, directors, actors, theater managers, who formed a theater commons known as HowlRound. They wanted to move away from the whole market ethic of commercial theater and cultivate a more authentic and socially relevant type of theater. We, we can talk about commons in a general sense, a commons of water, of forests, or fisheries, a digital commons of software code or scholarly or scientific data sets, or a commons of urban spaces, such as community gardens, urban land trusts, or public squares, or commons in agriculture, such as permaculture or slow food, or community-supported agricultural farms. But we really have to remember that each commons is unique. That's part of its strength because it's adapted to the specific circumstances of its given locality, its people, its history, its values, and so on. Now, most of us have a certain tendency to classify commons according to the type of resource that's being managed. So, for example, people will talk about a natural resource commons or a digital commons as if the resource defined the commons. But I'd like to suggest that this is really misleading because it implies that the resource and the resource alone determines the character of a commons and how it can be managed. And this simply isn't true. A commons is not just the resource itself. It's the resource plus the community that manages it plus the special rules and practices and values that the community chooses, the operating system, so to speak. So the most salient issue is the social governance system that's negotiated, not the resource as such. This is what unites all commons, the ways in which they all conform to varying degrees of certain principles, principles of participation or fairness, inclusiveness, transparency, and stewardship of the resource and community practices. I like to use the metaphor of DNA. Scientists will tell you that genes are deliberately underspecified so that, so that they can adapt to local circumstances. That's why you can have a single species, such as human beings, who are essentially the same uh, creature, same species, yet enormously diverse. Over time, we've all adapted to our different local geographies, cultures, and historical backgrounds. To be sure, different resources do affect how different commons can be managed. Many natural resources are finite and can be used up, which poses very different challenges 
than how to manage digital resources on the internet, for example, which can be uh, easily copied and distributed for virtually free. So these factors certainly affect how communities must manage their resources. A water commons must make sure that no one uses too much water or pollutes the water, for example. Whereas a commons based on digital information doesn't have to worry about that. It doesn't have to worry about free riders or using up the resource. It needs to worry about vandals and how to best organize information so that people can access it easily and add to it easily. So rather than classify commons by the types of resources that they manage, I think it's more accurate to point to clusters of commons that share similar resources and social practices. You have to remember that a commons is dynamic and evolving. It's not just a static object or thing. So it's best to look for similarities in how relationships are managed and how people identify and come to uh, care for the flow of those resources, whether it be fish, software code, irrigation water, or timber. In short, talking about the commons requires us to move from thinking about stocks of physical things to flows of those things. It requires us to move out of the market mentality of impersonal exchange of things and into the more fluid, evolving world of social relationships. And finally, it requires us to think less in terms of ownership and money and more in terms of long-term stewardship.